In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do the basic settings on OpenSense. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in our previous video, we installed OpenSense on Proxbox Virtual Machine, but you can use the same method to install on the actual server or a device where you want to install the OpenSense firewall. So currently we have only one network interface, but you probably will have at least two, one for WAN and one for LAN. So I'm going to add another network in Proxmox. So I'm going to go into the virtual machine and the hardware, and then I'm going to add a network device. And then I'm going to, well, I'll use BMBR0 for now, and I'm going to just add it. And then I'll show you how you can create a virtual switch in Proxmox as well. So under the node itself, go to the network and then create a new Linux bridge and then name it whatever you want. I'll just leave it as simple. And in the comment, I'll say open sense LAN. So go back to the VM and here you should be able to see net1 and then change it to VMVR0, which is actually the PFSense LAN. Oh, yeah, we have to, sorry, apply the changes and then it will be able to show us the active. So currently you can see it's not active. After applying the changes, it should be active. And then go back to the machine again and select this one, VMBR1. And now you can see it's selected to VMBR1, but it's showing in orange because currently the virtual machine is running. So I'm just going to just uh, do a reboot on system, which is number six. And it's going to confirm, do you really want to proceed? Hit Y and enter. Okay, so let's refresh this and we should be able to see this orange page is gone. So I'm just going to refresh it. It's still showing up here. So I'm just going to log in. And just power off this machine yes i think the changes are not yet saved so i'm showing you everything because if you make these kind of tiny mistakes so you you know what to do okay so the machine is powered off and i'm going to go back and just do vmbr0 again and then again VMBR1. Now you can see the orange error is gone and VMBR1 is selected. And then just simply power on the machine. All right, it's back up. So I'm just going to log in and I'll show you. So if I just go to assign interfaces and type one and hit enter. You want to configure lags now? I'm going to say no. You want to configure VLANs? No. Okay, so you can see now it's asking me to detect for WAN. And currently we have VTNet 0 and VTNet 1. That means now we have two interfaces. So we can do that all in the command, net, command line here. Or we can access the firewall. If you have set the public IP address, you should be able to access it from the public IP address. But I recommend setting up a LAN IP address and accessing it from the LAN network. So currently we don't have any LAN interface, but I know I'm in the network of 10.0. So I'll be able to access this using the web portal. So the IP address is uh, for this one was 10.0.5.2. So let's try that. 10.0.5.2. 
can see I'm able to access it and gonna just log in with the root. Okay, so uh, you can see starting initial configuration. So this is the initial setup, what the video title is actually. So we're just doing the basic settings. So in the start, we just added another network. Okay, so on the welcome screen, it's going to show you the wizard, which is like pretty simple things. You select something and you do next. You don't have to like scroll around all the different sections. So just click on next and then it's going to ask you for the host name. I'm going to just call it FWO2, which is firewall O2. And the domain, I'm going to choose zsol.uk, which I actually own. And then for the DNS, I will recommend if you have the DNS server, use that or use the Google DNS. And then override DNS, you can uncheck it if you want, but I'll just leave it as it is. And then in the next portion, I'm gonna, going to just leave unchecked for the DNS sec and the DNS sec data. And then for the network, it's asking if you want to set a static IP address or a DHCP or PoE. I'm just leaving it on static and then the IP address for WAN network. So since I know the IP address is this, I'm going to make it static and it should be with the subnet. And then the gateway which is going to be the default gateway for your network, for your WAN network actually. And then block this, this, this. So if you like check these two boxes, you will not be able to access the web portal using the WAN IP address. But Currently, I want it, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And for the LAN, you can set DHCP and please specify a valid address and CIR mask to use. So let's say I want to use this slash 16. So this is going to be the IP address and the whole network is going to be the DHCP. And it's asking if you want to configure the DHCP server as well. Uh, I would say yes. So this is going to be the LAN IP address. If you want to access your firewall using LAN IP address, it's going to be 192.168.0.1. And we are also configuring the DHCP server on this address. Okay. And then if you want to change the root password, what we actually did while the initial setup, sorry, while the installation, if you didn't see that in this video, you can check out my previous video. I showed everything how to install OpenSense and all the details about OpenSense as well. All right, so for this one, uh, I don't want to change it. I'll uh, just leave it as it is. So this is the last step in Wizard. Click Apply. So until I apply, nothing will be applied. Like whatever addresses I set, whatever DHCP or anything, it won't be applied until I click on Apply. So as I click on Apply, all the changes, uh, all the changes be made will be like applied okay so in the interfaces we have two interfaces by default LAN and WAN if you want to add more LAN interfaces if it's a virtual machine you can simply just add another LAN interface or if you have like actual server with multiple network ports you can add more as well okay so that was the method of accessing the firewall from the van address what if you have to access it from the LAN for that you're going to need another VM and the network of it should be in the VMBR one actually so I'm going to create another virtual machine and it's going to be for Linux Mint which is my favorite Linux uh, operating system it's easy to use and pretty simple and it's based on Ubuntu which is like long-term support so before we do that we need to download the Linux Mint. I have the link for it so just simply I'm gonna download it and meanwhile it's downloading I will create my virtual machine and Linux Mint 
and then in the OS section I will just leave it as it is for now I'll just select this until it's downloading then I'll come back and change it and for the disk I guess 40 gigs is fine and for the CPU I'm going to use 8 virtual CPUs and let's use 32 Seven six eight. I guess that's thirty two gigs. And then this is the main thing. What I wanted to show you. Make sure you select VMBR one. Or if you're using the LAN bridge, make sure you plug it into the LAN bridge to access it using the LAN network. All right. Under operating system, let's see if it's downloaded or not. It's still downloading. So I'm gonna just give it a few more seconds. All right, so it's downloaded and let's select Linux Mint and we selected the network as well and confirm. Yes, please start after created. Since I have like a bunch of RAM available, so I use 32 gigs. You can see I have a total of almost 400 gigs. So uh, I'll run this in the live mode just to quickly show you how to access this. All right, so I'm running Linux Mint in the live environment. You can see so it shows me uh, the install Linux Mint option here. And on the other side, I can see it has a network and it pretty much looked like it's getting the IP from the DHCP itself. So just click on network settings just to verify if it has a network. Yeah, 172.168.86.200. Yes, it's getting the IP address. From the DHCP server on OpenSense. Okay, so just to show you how you can access it from your LAN network, I am running this live environment machine so I can quickly show you that. Uh, it's going to show you warning, just click on advanced and then accept the risk and continue because we know it's our personal firewall. And then type in the details of login. And not now. So that's how you can access using the VAN IP address or the LAN IP address. And then in our upcoming videos, I'll show you more about the VPN stuff, the security stuff, setting up rules and stuff. And so far, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.